Hi, welcome to Travels in Pictland. Today I'm in the village of Aberlemno, which is near Forfar in the county of Angus. This beauty here is the Serpent Stone. The Serpent Stone is a fabulous example of very early Pictish art. And it's amazing it survives so well. Angus Council look after it, they cover it over in the winter, which is something I wish other uh, regional councils would do. It's really good practice. Otherwise these things won't be here in a few hundred years. So we have a serpent, a Z rod, a double disc and a mirror. The only thing we really know is we know what the serpent is. No idea what the double disc Z rod may mean. Although there's many interpretations, but I'll leave it up to you. And we think, or everyone seems to think, that the mirror represents uh, femininity. It's a wonderful early Pictish tribal stone. Fabulous example. So come and see it if you can. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you later. Well, this is one of the crowning glories of Pictish stones. It's a carving masterpiece and it's probably the only Pictish stone that features a battle sequence. Many scholars believe that it features the Battle of Nechton's Muir, which was fought in 685 AD. We even know the date, it was the 20th of May, and they reckon the battle was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So, there you go, not often you get detail like that. But the Battle of Nechton's Muir featured a Pictish king called Brood, or Brady, um, and an Angle Northumbrian king, um, called Egfrith. Now Egfrith's father, uh, Oswiu, had occupied parts of Pictland and they'd been extracting uh, tribute in the form of cattle, possibly slaves, um, any and produce of the land. So they'd been doing that for about 40 years. Brood was a new king on the block. The previous king had been a kind of puppet of uh, Oswiu and uh, he got basically deposed because the Pictish people uh, no longer had any faith in him and they wanted to be free of the yoke of Northumbrian rule. Um, so anyway, down in Northumbria, Ecfrith um, took over as king and he wanted to come back up here and consolidate, you know, probably take more tribute from the Picts. And there was a big battle down near Falkirk, which Picts were really beaten badly. Yeah, so Egfrith had come up to Pictland and um, battled with the Picts and beat them in a uh, battle near Falkirk. And they say that the river ran red with Pictish blood. Um, Egfrith had also had an expedition over into Ireland and uh, he subdued the area around of Briga. And while he was there, he sacked quite a few churches and upset quite a few churchmen. So I don't think he was that popular with his own churchmen down in uh, Northumbria. Anyway, Brood, the Pictish king, decided to lure Egfrith and his army up here. And they drew them further and further north and eventually trapped them in where they'd prepared the ground. And as you can see, we've got the battle scene here, which I'll describe later. But uh, it's a fascinating story.
egg for his father, uh, Oswe, um fairly occupied parts of Pict land. It was mainly the land of the Gododin in the Lovians. And uh, he was so confident of uh, being here to stay that he established a bishopric in Abercorn, and, uh, which was supposed to be the, the bishop of Pictland. Obviously, this made a lot of Picts very unhappy. And uh, after the Battle of Nechtensmere, they say that the bishop um, from Abercorn uh, fled and didn't stop until he got to Whitby down south. So I guess he must have been pretty frightened. Um, St Cuthbert had had a dream that Egfrith had died in battle and uh, Egfrith was warned not to come and do this uh, campaign. And uh, Cuthbert went to see Egfrith's wife while she was at Carlisle waiting on news of the campaign and uh, while he was there a surviving horseman arrived with the news that Egfrith had fallen. Uh, Brood wanted to show his Christian credentials and he actually had Egfrith's body buried on Iona so uh, he was trying to show the world how civilised the Picts were. Of course he was. Okay, this is the other side of the Aberlemno uh, stone and it's got a fantastic, well, very well preserved um, cross on the front. Very much, I think, in the school of the uh, Meagle stone carvings. They're like the Glam's stone and the stone in St. Vigian's Museum. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and I'll see you later.